Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Liam Moore. I'm from the Munster Technological University uh, based in Cork, Ireland. And this is a presentation or training unit brought on to you, to you by the Remain project, which is an Erasmus Plus funded project funded by the European Union. So we're into the final stage of data packet formats and we're going to look at something called Spark Plug B and talk briefly on that and how it overcomes some of the limitations of MQTT based communications. So we've covered introduction and current IIoT limitations and the main limitation centering around MQTT is around interoperability and standardized formats. We talked about JSON structures, which is a, stand, a way of um, formatting data. We looked at protobuf, which is a way of serializing that data. And now we're going to look at Spark plug B, which brings these structures together um, and adds a framework and documentation centered around um, creating an interoperable MQTT environment within the automation space. So objective is to focus on Sparkbook B and understand a little bit about it and how it works with MQTT. For machine to machine communications to be possible, as we've discussed, both machines need to speak, need to speak the same language. There are no humans in the loop to interpret data. The machines in this case are on their own and have to interpret the data based on pre-programmed structures and formats. Creating a standardized data format is a non-trivial task. Uh, let's say if you only had two processes that were measuring temperature and you wanted one to communicate with the other, then it's not that complicated. But let's say the project line manager comes along and wants to add an extra process or an extra 10 processes with different sensors, it starts growing and it starts becoming very difficult to manage visualize, conceptualize, and um, implement uh, over time. So it's always better if you can to use a pre-designed specification um, that has been designed for your particular application if one is available. And for MQTT, Spark Plug B is one of the proposed predefined formats created by a group called Sirius Link Solutions, which are an IIoT specialist software company. Um, we're not advocating for this company in one way. Their uh, Spark Plug B uh, solution is an open source um, solution for this problem. It focuses on MQTT as the underlying communication medium and uses all the underlying mechanisms of AQTT to achieve all the functionality required to create an OT, uh, IO, IIoT infrastructure. It was designed to address the limitations of existing automation protocols. Um, you can use publish subscribe as opposed to pulled, um, allowing interoperability between uh, different devices to communicate as a way of representing data in a standard format, has security features that are baked into the protocol itself that it exploits to make it secure, uses device state management to understand what the state of your device or process is, and it can be scaled for large industrial settings. MQTT, as we mentioned, is a lightweight uh, protocol with a lot of features. For an, from an IIoT perspective, it lacks standard data messages. Message structures are created by whomever implements MQTT. The same goes for arranging topics. Spark Plug B predefines all aspects of MQTT, defining topic structures and package structures. Spark Plug B also makes full use of MQTT features to allow full session and state awareness of connected devices. The infrastructure components of Spark Plug B follows a standard MQTT arch architecture with the various automation components set up as clients. So your broker again will sit at the start of all this and you'll have um, your SCADA systems as hosts and nodes uh, in terms of uh, EON devices. For Spark Plug, the broker needs to be MQTT version 3.1.1 compliant at a minimum. And clients uh, are any MQTT version 3.1.1 compliant software uh, and can be on manufacturing devices or built into any other automation component, including your SCADA or MES environments. Clients should present a client ID and optionally be able to use, present a username and password to access the MQTT infrastructure and any other security operate options such as TLS um, certificates uh, are at the user's discretion. So Spark 
plug B's session state awareness. In automation environments, network connection state of any device is critical. Spark plug B utilizes MQTT's last will and testament feature to ensure state is known. So this is a message that is, um, and I think we discussed it in previous presentations, that is pre-sent by an MQTT client when it connects to a network, sends off its last will and testament when it's got a connection, that's hosted by it, that's stored on the broker. And every 60 seconds, 120 seconds, whatever the heartbeat interval is set up as, typically I think it's 60 seconds. Um, if the broker doesn't log a heartbeat from the clients uh, periodically and that um, heartbeat lapses, it will publish the last will and testament of that device. So the session state is managed with birth, death, topic, namespace, and payload definitions along with the keep alive timer. When a client connects to a broker, it issues its last will and testament. And every period of time, as mentioned, typically 60 seconds, MQTT clients ping the broker with a message saying alive. If the ping is not received, the last will and testament gets published. But that is how you can know when a device goes offline. It's kind of like polling, except uh, you're not actually polling it. You're, the, the device itself is set up to automatically say it's there every 60 seconds. So here's a connection state diagram of um, the session state awareness. You have your primary application and the initial state of all clients is in an offline status. It connects to the MQTT server, publishes a state, so it goes online and it subscribes. So the metrics should now show that that client is online with the MQTT server. Um, period of time, you have a loss of TCP IP connection to the MQTT server, so it will set its metric to offline and shows a loss of collect connection. It reconnects. It republishes the last will and statement, uh, last will and testament, but you can track devices that are offline and online using this feature. Again, we discussed that one of the issues with MQTT is arranging your topic namespaces and getting them correct. And topic namespace structure is defined by Spark plug B as namespace, group ID, message type, edge node ID, and device ID. Namespace defines the structure for the remaining namespace elements for Spark plug B. This will always be SPBV version. So for version one, it'll be SPBV 1.0. Group ID allows grouping of MQTT nodes. It should be descriptive of the process, but small. Example would be clean line one, clean line two, clean line three. And then when you add the namespace on SPBV 1.0 slash clean line one. The message type has a number of message types are supported. Uh, BERT messages, DET messages, um, and so on. And uh, we won't go through all of these, but just be aware that the message type is a predefined type of message. DD data would be data from the devices. Uh, one of the more relevant ones if you're collecting data um, within the factory environment. Device ID is any device reporting to edge of no devices and we'll have a device ID. This is optional in the topic namespace. And while Spark Log B provides a topic namespace structure, some thoughts still need to be given to items such as group ID and device ID and may follow normal plant identifiers, line numbers, process numbers, batch numbers, whatever makes sense. So then Spark Plug B also provides support for payload definition, support for complex data types, data sets, file data, historical data, and rich metric support or metadata for metrics. Encoding is carried out using Google protocol buffers or the protobuf um, technologies we discussed briefly previous to this, with a structure that's not entirely JSON, but is close enough to make very little difference. And you can see an example of a Spark plug B payload there, very similar to JSON. All payloads, are going to, payloads will contain a time stamp, which is recommended to be the UTC format. It's going to create have metrics uh, representing key value data types. It's going to have a sequence number. And for the NBERT, the first message is always going to be zero. Then subsequent messages are plus one until 255, then zero again. You can also contain a unique identifier for each message uh, and custom encoding information. The metrics contains the date of interest, contains your name, alias, timestamp, data type, value, and any other data that needs to go in there. 
And for example, birth and death messages from nodes and devices would be contained to the metric. These messages also contain their metrics. Within their metrics, what data of interest is available from a node? Some more um, example messages from Spark Plug P documentation give an identity an ID of how the data is structured, what way you can have uh, you can see what data is in there, and how the metrics um, and types of data are presented. So very quickly, I suppose the takeaway from this presentation is that MQTT is a proposed IIoT um, protocol that a lot of factories are taking on, and it's kind of I suppose making the underpinning technology that we're proposing here for um, remote data access into factories. Um, but if you have an MQTT network set up within your factory, you need to think about standardized data formats and, and standardized session states and basically interoperability as a whole. MQTT doesn't give you any of this baked in, but there is a framework called Spark Plug B and potentially others that can be utilized um, to add that structure onto your infrastructure to allow you to maintain a scalable and maintainable um, data communications infrastructure. So again, this project is called Remain, co-funded by the European Union under Erasmus Plus framework. If you want more information, please click on the links here. You can see the other partners that are um, part of this project.